afternoon. My name is Kathy Hickey, and I'm the project coordinator for Mass Family Voices, a project of the Federation for Children with Special Needs. Welcome to Mass Family Voices webinar entitled Give It, Get It, Options for Free and Low-Cost Assistive Devices in Massachusetts. We're so glad you are able to join us. I'd like to give you a little background on the Federation for those of you who are new to us. The Federation for Children with Special Needs started in 1974 by a group of parents who were part of a coalition that pushed to get the first special education law in the country passed. The Federation provides information, support, and training to families whose children have special needs, special health care needs, and children who are at risk culturally, linguistically, or economically. Mass Family Voices helps families access and advocate for quality health care for their children with special health care needs. This is just one of the Federation's many projects. I will be facilitating the webinar today. This webinar will be recorded and archived at a later date on the Federation's website. A few technical pointers. Please be advised that everyone will be muted except our presenter. If you have any questions, please use the webinar toolbox that allows you to type in questions and we will answer them either during the presentation or I will collect them for the question and answer portion of this webinar which will follow the presentation. Our webinar today will be be presented by Randy Sargent, who is a parent of an, of an assistive technology and durable medical equipment user and a manager of Reequipment, a new durable medical equipment reuse program managed by the Mass Rehabilitation Commission. Randy, combined with her practical experience as a caregiver of a durable medical user with her professional experience in assistive technology product management to launch Reequipment in 2014. Welcome, Randy, and thank you to our IT director, John Sullivan. Thank you, Kathy, and thank you all for attending and taking some time from your lunch period to listen to uh, this presentation today. Um, just so you know, I can't hear questions directly, so Kathy will be uh, monitoring that for me. So if you do have a question that's related to what I'm talking about, please feel free to type it in, and I'm happy to answer questions as we, as we go along. Or um, save your question to the end, and we can provide some general, um, answer more general questions. Um, so a little bit about me. Yes, I have a son who has cerebral palsy. He uses all kinds of durable medical equipment. I am the proud owner of probably five wheelchair devices. Um, so, you know, by default, I've be become a bit of an expert on how to procure durable medical equipment. I've also been a user of recycled durable medical equipment, especially when my son was younger. And when this um, funding for this project came along, um, the fo good folks at the AT and Indep Assistive Technology Independent Living Program at Mass Rehab Commission were very happy to get it started. Um, we started this project thanks to some uh, public and private funding, both at MRC and um, the Shapiro Family Foundation, and we are now in our second year. But I'll tell you more about Requipment. Today's presentation, though, is a general overview on ways to get free or low-cost assistive devices in Massachusetts. And yes, we have a fairly robust recycling program here. I think you have a, you can view my screen. So I'm just going to uh, summarize what we'll be discussing today. We're going to talk the, about the difference between or what a recycled AT and DME means and the difference between some terms you might hear, device exchange and device reuse. We will look at considerations for when to consider recycled AT and DME and considerations for donating. And the bulk of the program today will look at different free and low-cost resources that are available to families and professionals here in our state. So for those who might not be as familiar with AT and DME, assistive technology is defined as any piece of equipment whether it's commercial or customized, that improves functionalities and capabilities of a person with a disability. Um, durable medical equipment is a subset of that. They're generally bigger, more expensive pieces. They can withstand repeated use and are designed primarily to serve a medical need. Um, they generally may be covered by health insurance, whereas assistive technology may not be. Uh, examples of assistive technology, let's see if I have that, um, 
would be things that cover vision, hearing, communication and augmentative communication, physical access, daily living and learning and cognition. Of course, you all are probably familiar with assistive technology in schools, which includes access, software, um, you know, all kinds of ed educational technology. Durable medical ad equipment addresses needs in communication. Speech generating devices are considered DME, possibly because of their price. Physical access, things like rollator walkers, strollers, daily living, showering and toileting aids, things needed for home safety, and of course mobility, whether they're customized or out of the showroom. Um, complex rehab are, is considered those expensive chairs that are literally ordered part by part. Um, my son is a complex rehab user, and I'm not kidding you when I tell you that his most recent chair that sticker price was about $50,000. Um, durable medical equipment is generally larger, more expensive, therefore it requires an evaluation and a recommendation and documentation from health professionals. Um, this is where, particularly in a school environment, either the physical therapist or a speech pathologist will have to do a, a fairly extensive evaluation, make their recommendations about the equipment that's needed, they then fill out letters of medical necessity, and we advise always to take pictures of the person, how good they look in their new equipment. Um, visuals always work. And um, then it's submitted to insurance, and you go through that kind of procurement process. I can, I can talk about that further if anybody wants more information about that. So what is exchange versus reuse? These are terms that are defined by the feds. I mean, a lot of this money from MRC is part of the Massachusetts AT Act funding. And they defined an exchange, equipment exchange, and equipment reuse. And those are both priorities for uh, the feds in terms of AT use. So exchange is something where devices are exchanged directly between individual consumers. And a good examples of that are is MRC's Get AT Stuff program and website, and ones you may be more familiar with are Craigslist, and then there's another uh, program called HELP. Um, so these are where none of the equipment is refurbished. You simply post it online, maybe with pictures and specifications, and you can charge for it or you can donate it, and the individual would be contacting you directly. So there's no fitting involved, no it's direct consumer to consumer like Craigslist if you've used that. Um, reuse is a different category where items are actually refurbished prior to being exchanged. So this is what Requipment does. Requipment accepts donated equipment, we clean it, we safety inspect it, we repair things that we're able to, and then it could be sold, it could be donated uh, to others. So Requipment is one example, pass it on on the CAPE you may be familiar with as he specializes um, in pediatric equipment. And there are others, wheelchair recycler, and there, there are many others, private programs that reuse, so they recycle and sell equipment. So here's a description on what makes why to consider reuse devices. Um, generally, they're devices that have been previously owned and no longer needed or appropriate for the individual. We get a lot of stuff from, uh, obviously, someone with a chronic or long-term disability and then passes it on when their physical needs change. A lot of the stuff, for example, comes from seniors where they are discharged from a hospital stay and they are you know, with a prescription for um, hospital beds and commodes and walkers and all kinds of things and either they heal or they pass away and that equipment is no longer needed. Some of the devices are used for demonstration purposes and they you know no longer needed or they've been replaced by a newer model. Um, the same with wheelchairs, sometimes they're older models and the vendor no longer carries them and of course reuse devices are generally or should be available at reduced or no cost to the new user. So who benefits? Who, who of your consumers, clients, families uh, would, can use reuse equipment? Well, of course, children and adults with long-term chronic disabilities, 
children and adults with acquired disabilities, brain injuries, cancer, seniors or adults who need help with activities of daily living, people who have been not denied via insurance. We see this a lot um, for whatever reason. Many of you know if you worked with Mass Health, there's often a five-year window when you can request new new products and sometimes people's need change either physically they've changed or their environment has changed and that equipment is not relevant anymore and yet they can't re you know repurchase during this five-year window also for people who need devices for short-term use that uh, we've provided equipment to visitors who are coming to visit family in Massachusetts and they need something also, people use it um, sometimes, believe it or not, people, the discharge managers at hospitals don't quite get it together <laughs> to get all the equipment people need for them to be discharged safely to home, and we provide equipment until their equipment arrives. And of course, the people who need it now, there are always um, emergencies. Uh, so why would you consider using recycled AT? Well, for one reason, the big one is insurance will not pay for the device. A second most popular one is needing a backup device is needed when the main device is not operating. We always encourage power wheelchairs, for example, to have a backup device, whether it's uh, manual or another power, if they can um, you know, store that. Sometimes um, you need a backup um, if you're traveling between locations, you're going to your house on the Cape, you're going to visit your parents, you need another shower chair. We, for example, um, if we go away on a weekend, I travel with a shower bench because not all um, hotel rooms have those. Um, so you need another device to travel between home and office or travel. Uh, sometimes you need a device now and cannot wait for the lengthy insurance process. It can take anywhere between three and six months to procure through insurance some complex rehab or assistive or communication devices. Um, also, you know, despite what people think, a power chair or a very familiar and customized piece of equipment is not something that people want to throw away. I mean, they be, their house becomes adapted to it. And sometimes if it, you know they're going to keep that chair until they can't use it anymore. And sometimes parts chairs are uh, discontinued and parts may not be available. So some people buy get reused stuff so that they have spare parts. So again, short term need when the user is waiting for a new device. The user needs one for a visitor. We've supplied them for rehab and hospice for short term. It's too soon to request another device because it falls within the insurance time frame. Um, they can also be used to try a device prior to purchase. The caveat to that is because reused devices are subject to donations, you don't always get the latest and greatest models. So, But if you wanted to try for power chair, for example, and see if you were able to work it in your apartment, this would be a good opportunity to do that. Um, also, passing un others, it's a great way to share unused equipment and get it and to help others in need. And of course, it's environmentally sound. Um, avoid put, filling landfills and keep stuff out of scrap. Recycled devices are wonderful for kids. I'm going to assume that many of you either ha have children. Um, really, really popular with kids because they grow. <laughs> And their needs change also. So recycled devices is an easy way to get devices that insurance won't pay for. For example, um, often um, we've always tended to use our insurance to buy devices for school. That way, sometimes we leave it at school, we can always bring it home. And reuse equipment might provide that backup one. So if you have paid for the stander at school, um, and you need one for home, you can consider, or vice versa, you can consider getting a reuse device for home use. It's a way to try out equipment at home. You know, you may not be sure that a walker will work on your rugs. Kids outgrow equipment pretty quickly, so most pediatric equipment is pretty gently used. And as you know, pediatric equipment is very expensive. So some of these fancy walkers, like this girl is shown, are, are like ridiculously expensive. So 
um, if we can get some, and we do get them. Um, this, they're great to re, you know, use refurbished equipment to have a spare. And in many cases, I can tell you, the paperwork is much, much easier than having to go through insurance to procure it. Here are some things to think, keep in mind about when you're considering using recycled items. I don't know one program that has a PT or OT available to custom fit a device. So when we work with a consumer who is ordering complex rehab, we recommend or pretty much insist that they have a PT or OT work with them to customize the chair to their needs. Having said that, we can do some things. I mean, we can switch from right-hand drive to left-hand drive. We can add a um, headrest, but we are not, you know, therapists and can't custom fit a device. So if someone does need that, they can get the chair, but they will need an expert to help fit it to them. Um, when you get reuse equipment, it is no longer covered by manufacturer's warranty. The user is responsible for maintenance and repairs. So reuse programs, um, if they're truly reusing, um, will most likely clean it, repair it to the best of their ability. We do replace batteries on uh, power chairs and scooters if needed, but after that, it's, it becomes a responsibility of the user. Just by their nature, reuse devices are older and no insurance um, and no longer supported by manufacturers, reps, or insurance. Replacement parts may not be available. They may be, they may not. Some other important considerations when you're um, considering trying sort of durable medical equipment is how will you transport the device? We find ourselves asking, uh, because it's, these items are free, um, there hasn't been a proper home evaluation, so we find ourselves having to ask a lot of questions. You know, a scooter sounds like a great idea, but, you know, it does need to be charged, so it has to be in a covered, dry environment. How accessible is the apartment? How accessible is the home? If you're planning on using it for community, to get out in the community, are you able to transport it? So these are the kind of questions we ask people when they call and think they want to try a power chair for the first time and don't have not had a wheelchair evaluation or even a home um, assessment. Um, you know, especially with wheelchairs, we always ask, you know, I, you know, if this is being used for community living and you're taking your mom to doctor's appointments, infusions, or whatever, you need to be able to fold that chair up into a car. So we, you know, at Requipment, we do have a customer support uh, line where people can call and we walk them through some of these considerations. Another one, of course, is are you able to use this without support? Uh, if you are familiar with Hoyer type lifts, um, there's some safety concerns in that. The person has to have a support person there to be able to get them in the sling and operate the lift. If the user does not have that, then this is not a good match for them. So if you have families who are interested in donating items, what do they need to think about? Is the item in working condition? I would, if, it, if it is, that's great. Be honest. What repairs are needed? Would you want to use this item yourself? I always say to people, no tape, no tears. Would you want your mother in this device? If the answer is no, it's probably past its useful life. And, you know, um, there are programs that do accept older wheelchairs and devices for, over, uh, third, for overseas and either it's considered scrap or goes overseas. You want to gather all the components, chargers, cords, instruction manuals, anything you have, the bits and pieces that go with it. Who's going to be responsible for removing the item from your location or do you have someone who can assist you? So if you're going with an exchange program and you list it on Get AT Stuff, some, you call the person, they say, oh my gosh, we really need um, you know, a, a patient lift for my mother. Um, you have to be willing and they understand that that person is going to come into your house and take it out. And it may be you, it may require more than one person. Um, how are you going to transport, transport the item to the new user? They're going to have to come to your house, or if you go online and find something, you have to be able to get there with a van or something to pick it up. 
do you have a specific user in mind? Um, obviously, for pediatric, it has to be a child. But we, there are several organizations who, and we do run into um, families who want to donate to a person like their loved one someone who has ALS, someone who has multiple sclerosis or spina bifida. Um, and there are organizations that do offer reuse programs for their community. And finally, do you want to donate or sell it? Um, it is up to you to determine the selling price of the item. The lower, the better. I can tell you if you price it high, you're not going to sell it. Um, and if you donate it, then you get a tax receipt. Um, our organization, if you donate to a 501c3 nonprofit organization, you should be able to get a uh, written letter and thanking you for the donation. And also, please note that most nonprofits will not put a monetary amount on that, so it's up to you to determine, do a little web research, and I you know, determine a fair used price for the item and then you can deduct it from your taxes. So yes, you know, you can sell the, try to sell the item and get the cash for it or you can donate it and take a tax deduction. So here we get to the meat of our program. Um, how do we find these recycling programs? Um, Mass Match, as I mentioned, is Mass Rehab Commission's AT um, program, I mean sort of umbrella program, and MassMatch runs several AT related programs, and I'll go into those including uh, Requipment and Get AT Stuff. There are definitely private reuse programs around, sometimes affiliated with other agencies, um, including international distributors. Um, there are mainstream classified exchange services and online services such as Craigslist, FreeCycle, or eBay. And Kathy will mail you. Um, we have put together a pretty comprehensive list. We update it pretty regularly of at l all the re reuse resources that we could find in Massachusetts. Some of them are affiliated with uh, Mass Match program, and then there are other smaller ones. Uh, councils on Aging. A good number of them have um, equipment loan closets. Um, so we have put together a guide. There are, in particular, two that I'll highlight who specialize in pediatrics. Pass It On, uh, George Navin on Cape Cod, and uh, Evie's Closet. She's actually in New Hampshire, but she delivers into Greater Boston and Merrimack Valley. Requipment also accepts pediatric, but we do adult as well. Um, so we'll, Kathy will share that with you, and feel free to pass that on to others. So here is an overview of the federally funded AT Act programs involved with reuse or exchange. Um, and I'll get into each one of these individually. Requipment is the program I manage. We are part of the Mass Match program. It is a wonderful collaboration of public and private funds. We get our funding from MRC, Department of Developmental Services, Department of Public Health, in collaboration with the Boston Home, which is a neuromuscular private hospital in Dorchester. Um, we also have private funding from, in the past, we had Shapiro Family Foundation, and now we have the Boston Foundation. We have a website. Um, it's listed at the bottom of that page where we uh, collect pictures and all the specs of all of our available equipment. It's kind of e-commerce-y. You go on and you can view all the items and request it. Um, you fill out a form online. There is no cost to any of the items we offer. The equipment is refurbished, so we have wheelchairs. As far as I know, we are the only program that does power wheelchairs and scooters. We also do sling lifts. Um, I say ramps, although we would love ramps, but we rarely get them. Um, we do adapted strollers. Any pediatric equipment goes really quickly. If you want, um, I encourage you, if you are on Facebook, to join our Facebook page, because that's where I post a lot of the pediatric stuff, and it literally will go that day. So uh, if you have families, you can direct them to our Facebook page, which is Facebook, then slash DME Requipment. Um, what else? We also collect donations of gently used equipment. Our service areas are Greater Boston and Central Mass. 
We have two refurbishing centers in Canton at the Mass Hospital School and a new one that opened last fall at that's part of the DDS Regional Center in Worcester. Um, that's where the items are stored, cleaned, and repaired by AT technicians. And we are also able to deliver items. And at this point, we are doing this at no cost or no charge for any of it. But I have to confess, <laughs> many programs do charge for you know a reasonable cost for delivery. So we may have to consider that. But the program is the equipment is cleaned and repaired and available at no cost. If someone can pick it up at either of the centers, that they can get it that week. Um, if we deliver, we have one driver who does it and it may take up to a week or two. So I, I, I point you to our website, it's dmerequipment.org and that's where we list every, you know, new equipment is listed weekly. So you do want to check there if you have um, clients with a specific need. Get AT Stuff is an internet-based exchange program across New England. So, and New York, actually. So it's all the New England states and New York, and it's, it's, a, it's an exchange. So it's similar to Craigslist, you, a family would post an item, you upload a picture, you can put a price on it or give it away for free. Uh, and similar to Craigslist, it's a closed system, so your contact information is never publicly displayed. You, re, you reply to an ad, and behind the scenes it get, makes its way to you, and so, you know, there is some security um, security in place there. They also have a searchable list of items with um, pictures and prices and the location of the item. There are also, just so you know, it's not all um, individuals who post on there. It's also other reuse programs and agencies and DME companies um, selling used equipment. So that's a good resource. MRC, as part of the Mass Match umbrella, um, offers two different loan programs through Easter Seal. So you may have uh, seen these. Easter Seals is pretty active in promoting them. One of them is an alternative financing program. So it's a way to get uh, low interest loans for high ticket items. Freq the biggest user, user, for example, is mobile cars. <laughs> So these are programs that help people get expensive DME who may not qualify for the most competitive rates because of credit issues or income, whatever. They have um, a special relationship with is it Sovereign Santander, I can't remember who it is now. But they work out a longer payback period so that, you know, if you're buying a, if you need to buy a van, adapted van, they can be forty, fifty thousand dollars 50000 So they'll work out a longer payback period and a, a competitive rate for that consumer. Uh, and again, that's the website for that. It is managed by Easter Seals. Oh, there is another program I should add, actually, back to this one. Through Easter Seals, they actually have a small equipment loan program where they will actually purchase and loan you devices under $500. So I believe that's where people are getting computers and iPads from. You know, all these programs have sort of limited funding, but um, at the end of this presentation, there's a list of all the web addresses. It's also on the MRC Mass Match which it's Mass Match website, um, has all the contact information and a description of all of these programs. So Easter Seals runs both of these loan programs for MRC. MRC also funds a home modification loan program. Um, we have, we, I feel like we've done all these programs. That's why I do this. Uh, we did, we have a home mod loan. Um, it can be as low as 0% or a very low interest loan. It goes up to $30,000. They're handled by um, different agents, different, uh, depending on where you're located, there's a different agency who handles it for your area. Um, it's used for, you know, adapting your home. They provide technical assistance. Home modifications include ramps. If you need to add a lift or a stair glide, widen doorways, uh, adapt bathrooms, things like that, you can do countertops, um, and they will provide a low interest loan for that. Sometimes it's, 
depending on, it is income based, so depending on your situation, it can be as low as 0% with no payback until you sell the house, or it's a low interest loan and you, and you do have to pay it back after a period of time. So that's a very popular program. Um, MRC also runs something called AT School Share, and it's been around for about two years. This is a way for school systems to share assistive technology and DME that they may have have purchased for a student and are no longer using. So it's a great idea. Uh, Mass Rehab has set up a whole database. It, it kind of looks similar to get AT stuff and we work with school systems and collaboratives and help them load their inventory of AT, which is sometimes extensive, into a database that they, and it helps them keep track of their inventory, but it also, uh, your, you know, as you know, the state has purchased this equipment, so it's a way for other school systems perhaps to find assistive technology and ed tech products that another school system might have that they could try out prior to buying for a specific student. Um, and there's a web, a web address for that. That one is fairly new. I can't remember how many schools are involved in that, but if you think your school system would be interested in using AT School Share, it is free to use, and you can contact MRC at this phone number. Easter Seals is a big partner with Mass Rehab. Uh, we, Easter Seals, well, I said Mass Rehab funds Easter Seals in Worcester as well as UCP in Berkshire County for two, what are called ATRCs, they're the Assistive Technology Regional Centers, and they provide devices for demonstration and loan. So this is a way to try equipment out for free. Uh, the ATRC in Boston is down near South Station. See, there's a picture. Oh, there's a picture of the uh, office. They have all kinds of equipment, uh, ed tech equipment, as well as vision, hearing, uh, products for activities of daily living. And they are there to help consumers and professionals learn more about the kind of assistive technology available for a particular need, to learn the pros and cons of devices, and help you decide what devices are best. We recently borrowed, they, they do have a, um, augmentative communication devices there. We had to wait a little bit, but we got to trial a device for a month and we ordered it shortly thereafter and got it within another month. So we borrowed a device for up to four weeks, did a trial with a speech pathologist at school, and so it's good for trials. They can, um, as I said, they're the two places where these sites exist are uh, UCP Berkshire County, and I'm spacing where that location is at the moment, but it's out there, and downtown Boston, but they can bring things out to Worcester or ship things to you if you need it. There is a available list of items on the Mass Match website. You kind of have to dig a little bit, but if you look for it under the ATRC section, you can get a list and request online the kinds of equipment that they have there. So there we go. Pittsfield, thank you. <laughs> Locations in downtown Boston at South Station and one in Pittsfield. To, it is highly recommended that you make an appointment if you're going to go there. And they absolutely welcome teachers and therapists as well as families and consumers. So, but I suggest you make an appointment and they will have the relevant, you know, the right person there to conduct um, evaluations with you. So here are the websites that we have referred to. The massmatch.org website is uh, the big Mass Match website. There's a lot of information, a, good, a lot of good information on that, so it's worthwhile exploring. Getatstuff.org, uh, requipment has its DME requipment because the other requipment was taken by a truck company, Easter Seals of Mass, and UCP Berkshire. All of these resources are available for consumers, adults, families, employers, and professionals. Many of them list actual items that are available for you to use at little or no cost with photos, descriptions, specifications. Uh, some of them have an online request form where you can submit directly and they will get back to you. So this is, that's pretty much it. Did I do this in just over 35? Um, feel free to contact my office. I'll, 
equipment, our admin office is actually located at MRC downtown on Washington Street. We have a toll-free number. Um, there it is. There's our Facebook page, and our website was listed before. And Mass Match, uh, it's a parent organization. They also have a toll-free number, and we, they would be help, happy to help you uh, find any of equipment. So that's our that's it for today. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, Kathy will be our monitor here, so feel free to ask away. Anyone? Okay, our first question have, is, have you connected with New England ADA Center to help spread the word? We have not reached out to the ADA Center. Let me, so let me explain where our, where, you know, Requipment is a pretty small program. Um, we are we are collaboratively funded by state agencies as well as some private funding. We're really small. We're small but mighty. Pretty popular. Um, our focus at this point is reaching families with children with disabilities, of course. Um, seniors. We are pretty active with councils on aging, ADRCs, and all the network for senior services. Vets. That's, and of course, uh, different disability-related organizations like Spina Bifida, the MS Society, ALS, things like that. But we will absolutely consider the ADA. Anyone who can, re we take referrals from anybody. Um, and places, rehab hospitals are very, we're very popular with Spalding and any of the rehab hospitals who um, are discharging patients and may or may not have the equipment ready for them to discharge safely to home. But thank you for that suggestion. Are there any other questions? Anybody have any particular thing they're looking for? Or is this just more for information and referral? We're very friendly at Requipment. We have someone in the office five days a week. Uh, we specifically have a, you know, a consumer support operations coordinator who handles our, all of our phone calls and emails, and we, we we aim to please, so. I will email all participants the PowerPoint and her resource list. This will also be archived on the Mass Family Voices website. If there are no more questions, thank you for participating and have a great day.